Well, basically I was in a very confused and distraught state of mind and couldn't decide if I wanted to die or not. I thought I did, but at the same time, I thought I didn't. So I had two boxes of Simply Sleep pills, 25 milligrams of diphenhydramine, and I took all 48 pills and put them in a cup and just sat and looked at them for a while. I thought I wanted to take them, and then I thought I didn't want to, and then I started taking them all, but after I did it, I decided I didn't want to die, so I called 911 to come rescue me. Yes, I know. Bear with me. Anyhow, there were about six people suddenly swarming around in my house, police officers and paramedics. It took them 15 minutes or so to decide what to even do, even though I told them right up front what I had taken and how much. As I got into the ambulance, I started to feel really drowsy and a little cold. They had me start drinking a huge thing of activated charcoal. I think it said 50 grams on it, but at that point, I was starting to trip, so I could be wrong. Since I was cooperative about drinking the charcoal, they didn't pump my stomach at the hospital. The ambulance ride took about another 15 minutes. The charcoal tasted heinous and made me gag, but I couldn't vomit, even when I tried to a couple times. Nothing would come up. We got to the hospital and they wheeled me in on a stretcher. At this point, I'm starting to feel dizzy and tingly all over and my memory starts to become spotty. I remember a doctor introducing himself to me, don't remember the name, and I say hi back in this whispery voice, and then I remembered him looking at me with a stricken expression, and I couldn't remember why. Several days later, the memory finally came back to me that he was asking me what kind of insurance I have. I have none. Then, I was in the ER, and I started to feel really restless and was tossing around on the bed while the nurses were looking up what to do for a Benadryl overdose. I could hear someone making whimpering noises and I thought, who is doing that? But then I realized, it was me. I felt sort of detached from my body. They hooked me up on a saline IV, and the thing monitored my oxygen level and stuff. There was some charcoal still left in the container, so they put it in a cup and warmed it up and had me drink it like that. As they were warming up the charcoal, I looked around and started to notice visual effects. You know how when you unfocus your eyes and squint and it makes sort of these blurry lines all over everything? It was kind of like that, like things were shifting and moving and I couldn't quite focus my eyes right. They gave me the cup with the charcoal, and when I put it up to my mouth to drink it, I drooled a bunch of it all over myself. I couldn't keep my mouth closed all the way. They wiped all the charcoal off of me, took my street clothes off, and gave me a hospital gown to wear. I had to pee at that point and had my first experience peeing in a bedpan. Couldn't move out of the bed with all the wires and stuff coming off of me. That feels really weird, let me tell you. After that, I kept having to pee like every 15 minutes or so. I couldn't think straight anymore. If they asked me a short question, I could answer it. Can you hear me? Yes. Know where you are? I'm in the hospital. But then they started to ask me longer questions, something about family. Maybe they wanted to contact somebody. But as the sentences became longer than three or four words, I couldn't concentrate at all and would immediately forget what they had just said. And I remember trying to answer a long question that I couldn't really remember and my words just went all over the place and suddenly I was like, huh? What am I saying? My heart was beating like crazy. They brought in an EKG and stuck a bunch of stickers all over my chest and hooked me up to that. I opened my mouth to breathe and it felt super dry so I asked them for some water. And they gave me some but said don't drink too much and I was like bleh why? And they're like just don't. Now my memory starts to get really weird. I can only remember little bits and pieces of things. I remember feeling really weak. They had set the little bottle of water I was drinking from a table a couple feet from the bed and I had leaned over and was stretching my arm out for it, but I felt so weak I couldn't get my arm all the way to the bottle. Someone finally saw me and took pity and handed me the water. I remember the nurse holding my hand and telling me it's alright, we won't let you die, but I didn't care really if I died. 
and I remember feeling this calm feeling inside and laughing a little. But at the same time, my body felt very restless and twitchy, and I kept shuddering. Not a convulsion, but just kind of my whole body would just jerk for a second. I started having short dreams, but then I would wake up and be like, wow, that was weird. Thought I was at home for a second. And then they'd ask me again, do you know where you are? I knew I was at the hospital still. I think I remember having an x-ray on my stomach, but there was a dreamlike quality to the memory, so I'm not sure if it happened really or not. I got a radiology bill later though, so maybe it was real. I remember just staring at the palm of my hand for a long time, and then finally realizing what I was doing. I also remember thinking bugs were crawling on me, but when I went to brush them off my arms, I could see that there was nothing there. Another doctor came in, a lady doctor this time and she told me she was giving me a shot of Ativan to prevent seizures, and I was like, okay, sounds good. After she gave me the shot, it felt like my head cleared up a bit and I could think again, but then my memory really starts to fade after that, and I just remember being wheeled into the ICU. There were some long plastic things hanging from the ceiling, and I said, I think I'm hallucinating. I can see Q-tips dangling from the ceiling, and the nurse said, oh yeah, we hang things from those, and I was like, oh, they're really there? After that, I think I was asleep off and on, or else I just don't remember what happened. I remember the nurse coming in and bringing me some ice chips for my dry mouth, and she was looking at me like I had two heads or something, so I'm not sure what crazy things I may have been saying. The blood pressure thing kept squeezing my arm like crazy, so I pulled it off, but then the monitor thing went crazy thinking I had zero blood pressure and beeped, and the nurse ran back in and slapped it back on my arm. Then I remember the psych lady coming in and asking me if I was trying to hurt myself with all that Benadryl. Several people asked me that in the course of the night, and I didn't really see any point in lying since I took two full boxes of sleeping pills. But anyway, at that point I felt well enough to stand up again and put my clothes back on. My head was pretty clear. I could see a clock and it was about six hours or so since I took all the pills. My memory was still off and on though. I remember talking in the car with the psych lady on the way to the mental hospital but I don't remember getting into the car or getting out of it. Anyway, that's my experience with a big overdose of Benadryl. I do not see any hallucinations that I am aware of other than the weird visual effects. If I did have any hallucinations, they were either very realistic ones involving hospital workers or I've just totally forgotten them. I had a couple times where I was dreaming while awake, but I didn't move from my hospital bed or anything. I also probably didn't absorb the entire 1200 milligrams since they got to me so fast and I drank all that charcoal. The next day I was very shaky, my hands especially seemed to shake and I just slept most of the day. I also kept feeling like my heart was beating fast but I'm not sure if it was the Benadryl or just feeling freaky about almost killing myself. I also got a huge bruise on my arm from where that darn blood pressure thing was squeezing me. And when the people at the mental hospital took my blood pressure on the other arm, it made a big bruise there too. Kinda weird, not sure if the easy bruising thing was related to the Benadryl or not. All healed up now though, and as far as I can tell, there were no lasting effects from this. One of the paramedics assured me that 1200 milligrams is enough to kill someone my size. Overall, I would not describe the experience as being a really fun trip. There's a lot of twitchiness, restlessness, sensation of bugs crawling on me and such. I did have a feeling of calmness and peace, not sure if it was the drug or if I was just sleepy and happy to be saved from death. In an effort to control depression and possibly as a replacement for quitting alcohol suddenly some six weeks prior. My wife took high doses of diphenhydramine for 14 days straight at 750 to 1000 milligrams per day. Now that's like 30 to 50 pills a day. And as you know, that is enough to cause problems for someone who weighs 110 pounds. But she built up this dosage over a period of 5 months. So what happened to her after 5 months of building up to this level of tolerance to DPH? After she switched to the 500 plus milligram dosage, she went crazy. I am talking about blowing up, throwing things in the house, which she has never done, making many mean and vicious suicide threats and hiding in a closet for hours on end. Then came a seizure on one Monday. 
She went into some convulsions suddenly after eating half of a pizza and having a great time watching some television with me while our kids were asleep. She quit breathing for easily 45 seconds during and after the seizure. She puked about one tablespoon during the seizure, but that was it. So then we ended up in the ER, compliments of an ambulance. There, she refused to tell the physicians about the actual dosage she was taking and also started to go belligerent again. I then told the ER doctors about the suicide threats and about how I honestly was afraid she would kill me or the kids if she came home. She went into the psych ward involuntarily and was in restraints for 24 hours before she calmed down. Nine days later, she was released. I had left with the kids because honestly in that state of mind, she had no business around the children. After several more days outside the hospital and abusing DPH yet again, this time with a few bottles of NyQuil thrown in, she came to her senses and has agreed to go to Alcoholics Anonymous and there I think she will see that she has been fighting some demons with booze and then when booze was over she fought the demons with DPH. Her recollection of the DPH haze includes hearing voices and extreme paranoia and aggressive behavior. So I read that taking quite a bit of Unisom sleep gels or Benadryl would make you trip balls. Obviously, I wanted to try it, and I found a bottle of 50 milligrams Unisom in my dad's kitchen. In a hurry, I grabbed a handful and shoved it into my backpack to take the next night at my mom's. The next day, I was really nervous and excited, as I had never done psychedelics or tripped. I convinced one of my friends to come over and trip sit me, and we told our parents we were doing homework. My mom said she would be leaving to go to a football game in about 30 minutes. I took all 11, thinking we'd be safe. In about 5 minutes, another one of my friends said he was coming over to hang with us. He got there in about 10, and things were going pretty chill. I told him what I took and that I'd probably be tripping balls soon. My mom yelled and told us dinner was ready, so we all three went into the kitchen and ate. During the meal, I started feeling sensations all over my body. It felt like I was just really stoned. My mom told us she wasn't going to leave and I didn't think anything of it. After dinner, I told them I was going back to my room. I tried to stand up and it was one of the hardest things I had ever done. Eventually, we all three made it to my room and we all sat in my bed, me in the middle. I told them I felt amazing. I remember them poking my back and it tingling all over and I kept asking them to stop, but I just kept feeling pokes and it started to really hurt. I stood up and stumbled into my closet and started hysterically laughing with them. They knew I was gone and thought it was hilarious. I started walking around my room and tripped over a Guitar Hero guitar and thought it was super hilarious. I realized colors were blending together and things looked so weird. One of my buddies was asking me who I was and I couldn't understand him until he said, What is your name? That was the last thing I remember before I blacked out. I remember small glimpses of the first trip sitter walking out of my room, my other friend saying, dude, if your mom comes in, you're screwed. My mom came in and said something and looked at me in the eyes and started to freak out. She was extremely confused and said, what is wrong with your eyes? I was shocked that she was in my room and I went to the bathroom to look in the mirror. I looked in my eyes and they looked fine to me, so I told her I was fine and sat on my bed. She kept standing there staring at my eyes and it was really creeping me out so I laid down and ignored her. I remember seeing her and my friend leave the room to talk. Then I remember my dad walking into my room and looking at me and saying, yeah, he's definitely on something. They all kept asking me what I took and I could not understand the question. I was extremely confused. My dad took me and sat me down in multiple rooms asking me what I took and where I got it. Eventually, we were all in the living room and they said we were going to the hospital. I was so confused and didn't know what was going on. I remember blacking out in the car and seeing my friend leave on his moped. Then I was on a hospital bed. The nurse said he had put some morphine in my IV to sedate me and calm my rapid heartbeat. I was so confused and thought that everyone was overreacting. I was convinced I was 100% okay and just tripping. He brought this stuff to put on my lips because they were really dry and chapped. 
The nurse then asked, where are you? What month is it? What grade are you in? What school do you go to? I had a very hard time answering these questions because I got really nervous, and I thought I had to act sober so no one would know I was tripping. I just remember everyone looking at me and talking about me. Then I remember everyone leaving the room and the nurse asking me to pee in the plastic container, and I tried, but it was so difficult. Eventually, I was able to pee, and it was so relieving. I kept looking at my phone and seeing how blurry it was. I would pick it up and look at it, and then put it back down just to pick it back up again. At one point, someone came in and told us we had been admitted to a room. The nurse started wheeling me out on the bed I was sitting in, and we went through the hospital, and up an elevator on it. We arrived in my room, and I don't remember much else, but people told me to get sleep, and I went to sleep. I woke up the next morning really confused. My parents told me that I had OD'd and my buddies texted me and told me how scary last night was. My parents told me that I wasn't making any sense last night and that I scared the hell out of them. It was very traumatizing for everyone involved. Moral of the story is, no matter what people say on the internet, doses affect people differently and this drug is not safe. You have almost zero control of yourself and no sense of reality. It was very... Scary. Background info on me. I have been fascinated by hallucinogens ever since I first learned about them in my high school health class. Out of all the drugs out there, they seem to have the most profound effects on the mind. Unfortunately for me, I didn't do so well in my hallucinogen presentation. It was rushed and disorganized and I got a bad grade. I took this poor grade to heart and made it a goal to ingest the drugs to get a better understanding of what they were actually like instead of talking out of my ass in an attempt to compensate for my failure. So I tried shrooms once and I tried DXM about three times to get an idea of what psychedelics and dissociative drugs were like. I read online that there was another class of hallucinogens I had completely neglected, delirians. A type of drug so scary, almost no sane person would try it. But I couldn't just stop at two categories of hallucinogens, I had to try them all. I thought I could handle this so-called scary drug. I was very, very wrong. My first trip. I was considering finding Datura since I lived in Virginia, or growing deadly nightshade in my garden but I discovered that Benadryl was very similar in composition to those two drugs and readily available. Since I was on summer break from college and had a quite a bit of free time to trip out, I decided to head over to a dollar store and pick up some OTC sleep aid to hallucinate, and decided to down about 400 milligrams of the blue pills with a pickle jar full of water. I was told delirians make your mouth very dry. I decided to use the library computer to watch YouTube videos and play a game I downloaded waiting for the sleep pills to kick in. When I first felt it coming on, I had a very strange migraine type headache and thought I was going to have a stroke. So I thought to myself, oh well, it's been a good life, I guess I'm gonna die now. I accepted my fate and at that point my headache died and I began to hallucinate and lose all control of my muscles. I asked the front desk to check out a library book but I was so severely intoxicated that I could only speak in gibberish. I walked back over to the computer and wondered why the computer was acting wonky. At the time, I thought it was a glitch, but then realized my limbs were so heavy that I simply lost the ability to type. The visuals were quite interesting, but at the time very ominous and sinister looking. As I stared at the screen, it looked as though it was covered in a film of tiny droplets of mineral oil slowly dripping down the screen around the library. The grain of the wood on the desk started to move like with most other hallucinogens, but something that was unique to this drug was the refractions. It looked as though the entire library was underwater. I also noticed that whenever I looked at an object long enough, the color would slowly fade away. I walked to the bathroom to fill up my pickle jar with more water. I faded out of consciousness. I was awoken when I heard a deafening, distorted shatter and saw water and glass shards scattered across the tile floor. I had accidentally dropped my pickle jar full of water due to the drug's muscle weakening effects. One thing that really bothered me was my heart and my breathing. My heart was pounding away at least 130 beats per minute, maybe higher, and my breathing was shallow. 
This made it very difficult to walk without becoming winded, and I'm sure if I sprinted, I would have surely died. Another thing that really bothered me were the closed eye hallucinations. I saw myself walking towards the entrance of the library, but then I slammed into a car door as it was being opened and realized I was nowhere near the entrance at all, and was actually in the parking lot. I apologized to the guy, and in my paranoid state of mind, I thought he would kill me soon if I didn't leave immediately. So I walked away. The closed eye hallucinations on this drug are so realistic that it's hard to tell whether or not your eyes are really closed or open. I had essentially memorized the layout of the parking lot, the library, and the entrance in my mind, all in 3D. I decided to walk home to the room I was staying in, and on the way home, I came across a guy and asked him, Are you real? Am I real? he asked. I stared at him with extremely dilated eyes for what seemed like forever before I walked off. On the way, I heard angry screams. Someone was yelling my name as if they wanted to kill me. I never found them. The rest of the day was fine and it had surprisingly little after effects. The second trip where I almost died. It happened in the library again and was quite similar. The second time I took it was a much higher dosage, 750 milligrams, and this was a huge mistake. It started off the same, but this time I blacked out almost completely, leaving gaping holes in my memory. As the drug started to affect me, I lost all control and it warped my perspective. It's a terrible and pathetic thing to witness yourself slowly but surely turning into a psychotic zombie in front of a library full of people. I couldn't make out their expressions, but I'm sure I freaked out all of those people, walking like a zombie and gripping onto the library shelves and falling flat on my ass. I lost my ability to hear and see most things. I got tunnel vision and could only hear or see what I focused on. Everything else was just blackness or my ears ringing. It also felt as though my heart was going to explode. I as a zombie walked up to the info desk to check out a book. They told me that I needed to go to the front desk. I said I need to check out a book. I'm going to have to call someone, the librarian said. I stood there leaning over the info desk to support my weakened leg muscles that felt like they were just noodles made of human flesh. It didn't matter what the stupid librarian said, she was going to check out that book for me. Those are the kind of psychotic and nonsensical thoughts that ran through my mind. She put a phone to the side of her head and moved her lips, but no words came out. Everything was ringing static or just mute. I don't really remember much after that. I was pretty much unconscious and I might have been led to the exit by other people at the library. While I was in the parking lot, a police officer drove by me and asked, Have you seen a suspicious looking young guy walking around in circles? And I told him, No. And he drove off. Now I realize that I was the suspicious looking young guy, but that police officer may have been a hallucination as well. I walked all the way home, something that normally took me 45 minutes to an hour, took me at least 3 hours. On the way home, I had a scenario that played in my mind of crackheads leaping out of the bushes, raping me and gutting me. I thought I was in serious danger and decided to avoid any bushes at all costs. When I got home, I sat on the ground unconscious with my door wide open. When I came to, there I was with a paring knife held up to my forearms ready to end my misery, but then a voice in my head said, nah, and I casually tossed the knife aside. A roommate saw me in a very delirious state with dilated pupils, a sky-high pulse rate, and talking like I had schizophrenia, completely random and disorganized thoughts. I was talking about how walruses were related to waterfalls and tomato sauce when I was asked the question, what's wrong? Luckily they were a nurse and gave me some sedatives to lower my heart rate. Unfortunately, it made my breathing very difficult, so I was wheeled off to the emergency room. They asked me if I had taken any drugs and I told them no. I'm really not sure if I was delirious that I had simply forgotten I had taken the drugs or if it was a defense mechanism, denying everything, fearing that they would send me to the rehab or a psych ward if I told the truth. It may have been both. When I finally took the bus back home, I realized I was still tripping sack. The initial physical effects of the drug were gone, but whenever it was dark outside or when I turned my lights out, my eyes began to vibrate rapidly and I saw demons everywhere. I even saw my bedsheet slowly but surely transform into a green demon sleeping right next to me. I also noticed pronounced amnesia, depersonalization, and dissociation. I did some things that were strange, pathetic, and very out of character, like blacking out for several seconds, 
and then finding myself furiously masturbating to the picture of the Twilight actress in a Guinness Book of World Records, and I had a vague feeling that I went to a dollar store and demanded they give me my money back because their pills had messed me up. Watching movies was also quite disturbing. When I watched movies or looked at pictures, it felt as though the characters were real, staring me right in the face. To this day, whenever I look at a picture, I am transported into it, or the reverse happens, where the characters are transported into my world, which can be either fun or creepy, depending on what it is. A few months afterwards, I decided to watch the movie Jacob's Ladder, and found it to be surprisingly relevant and very disturbing. The hallucinations in the movie reminded me a lot of what I saw under the influence of diphenhydramine, and towards the end of the movie, I discovered that the Viet Cong soldiers in the movies were gassed with the chemical weapon BZ. After watching, I feared I may have rotted my brain. I knew the initial trip would be unpleasant, but I never expected the side effects could be so long-lasting. Because of this drug, I have extreme panic attacks, hypochondria, and heart problems. I literally can't run at all or stay up too late, because it causes me to get butterflies in my chest and feel like death, just like during the delirious trips. The doctors can't find anything wrong with my heart, but I can still feel it. I read online that the heart damage caused by cocaine is often undetectable, and I suspect that it's the same case with diphenhydramine overdoses. I can't recommend this drug to anyone, unless of course, they're using small doses for allergies. DXM is much safer and more pleasant, to this day, I think to myself, why oh why didn't I take the DXM? Had I known that diphenhydramine was part of a class of poisons used for mind control, murder, and chemical warfare, these are the drugs that inspired zombies, I might have never taken this awful drug and kept my health and my sanity. Every day feels like my last day on Earth.